Life is an adventure, much like riding a canoe down a river. Sometimes a ride is exhilarating. Sometimes life, like a river, seems to stand perfectly still, like a boat on a hot, windless day. And like all adventures, there's a chance that we can find ourselves in the rapids. Clinging to God, we watch, we listen for the waterfall ahead. My adventures with God in the rapids began in July of 2001. My husband was diagnosed with melanoma, a deadly form of skin cancer. He was 55 years old. We had a strong marriage of 31 years, two grown children to be proud of, a new baby grandson, friends and family. Bill was practical. We had savings, life insurance, medical, dental, and vision insurance, loss of life and limb insurance, short-term and long-term disability, all through Enron. The treatment started out with chemotherapy, a new revolutionary type of chemotherapy. And he was in the hospital off and on 60 days in the hospital with three-week periods between. We were fortunate to go to MD Anderson. We had good insurance through Enron. Then, December 3rd, 2001, we turned the television on to find out that Enron collapsed. He lost his income, his insurance, his life insurance, his disability payments. You, you go into a situation, you don't know that much about the medical field. You don't know what, you don't know the tubes and the, and the equipment, and you're, you, you're like in a jungle of unfamiliarity, and you're like a scared child in a lost world. That's the feeling you have. There's fear. Fear is, is ever-present when you're, when you're in a situation, a crisis. Fear is your companion. And he was supposed to have six treatments, but after the fourth, they realized it wasn't working. So we went directly to surgery. And um, they literally cut him in half. And then he had radiation. And then oh, he had to rush it for Christ had it on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day because the insurance, he had 25 more days of insurance at that point. So we lived with stress. Every day was like a soap opera. We never knew what life would bring to us the twist. It was like uh, yin and yang. Good would come and then bad would come. Then a blessing would come and a miracle would come. Was, every day was like a book in our lives. To come up money for the treatment, first thing we realized we had to sell our house. We put our house up on the market. And Bill's story was everywhere on the media. And I asked God, I don't want anything, but I really would appreciate somebody come sell our house for nothing because we need the money for medical treatment. We didn't know how long he would need to be treated. The company called us and said two realtors had called, saw our story, and volunteered to sell our house at no cost. We stopped all unnecessary bills, cell phones, newspapers, anything we could cancel, we canceled. Just, just to be smart. Because when we reinstated the medical insurance and the life insurance they wanted thousands of dollars up front like four or five months in advance before they reinstated they were really hoping that you couldn't come up with the money so we went through a lot of our savings pretty quickly making the house payment all the same bills came rolling in but you had no money coming in and then you had medical expenses and the hospital parking fee was nine dollars a day at that time it's higher now so there was more going out we had to lighten the ship the best way we knew how the media was really our best friend because it put pressure on Enron to help everyone, but it helped us to get our insurance reinstated and our life insurance, and then subsequently the short-term disability money. But it took a long time, and it was very stressful in the meantime to wait, not knowing if you had coverage when in our entire life we had never gone without insurance. It was always a problem. It was Sunday, September 1st. It was around noon, and myself and my two children and my two sisters and their husbands were in the room with Bill, and we could tell there was a change. He started taking fewer and fewer breaths, and we surrounded his bed, and his two schnauzers were on the bed with him, and he took one final breath. It was very, very peaceful, very, very peaceful. It was almost like a cathedral experience. When one is going through a crisis, 
God's voice. You become very sensitive to God's voice. When in everyday life, God's voice is kind of like background music. You hear it and you're peaceful and you know he's there. But when you're in a crisis situation, God's voice is like a radio announcer warning of a tornado. You tell everybody, shh, 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 and you turn the radio up. And you, your ears, your antenna go real high, and you're very sensitive to any sound God makes or any direction he gives you. And it's a very, it's a very um, intimate time with God when you're in a crisis situation. Very intimate. And you come, become very in tune with God. The number one piece of advice I would give someone is watch and listen for God's interventions. We don't, we don't do that enough. He's working every day in our lives, but we don't slow down or take the time. You know, the favorite scripture that God gave me or God taught me is be still and know that I'm God. The first time he told me that, I was in the waiting room to find out if Bill had cancer. My response was, I said out loud, God, you know I'm not good to be him still. Today, if you're trusting in your title, your position, your Fortune 500 company, social status, or political influence, you'll be sorely disappointed. As I enjoy my life today in the tranquil waters, I will leave you with one question. Who is rowing your canoe?